Section 9 of The American Diary of a Japanese Girl. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Lynette Calkins. The American Diary of a Japanese Girl by Yone Naguchi. In America, Part 7. 26th. It rained i implored mother schuyler to select a book from her library all the literature was packed in there beginning with socrates sane as a silver dollar every book was without finger marks book without finger mark is like bread without brown crust dear finger mark the fashion is to buy books and to glance at their covers i suppose but not to read them modern publications aren't meant to be read are they the authors have degenerated to the place of upholsterers isn't it a shame mrs schuyler picked out for me rupayat of omar khayyam my uncle said american woman can't keep away from omar and chicken salad i began to peruse it the raindrops by my window tuned tap tap tip tap tap i thumped the book on the floor and exclaimed mr khayyam Rubaiyat is a menace against civilization. Americanism is nothing but the delight in life and the world. I wonder why the wise government of Washington does not oppose its pagan circulation. It is leprosy. But I thought how truly true was his I came like water, and like wind I go. I took up the book and opened it again. Then I shut it. I listened to the tap doesn't it sound like a wan voice of omar yes twenty seventh a lady whom i met at mrs schuyler's reception sent me a mass of distinguished roses loving american i said i would arrange them in japanese cult my style is the enshin ameriki is destitute of flowers nippon is known as a paradise of botanists the scientists of flower decoration if i may call them so are given a great advantage in their craft of delineating beauty the rose is not much of a flower to the jap mind they never employ it in their work it has no grace of line its perfume cannot indemnify for its being thorny things not qualified to convey charm are declined from the togonama i love roses awfully well myself I will make the best of them in my art. Is there any proper vase in Schuyler's house? Mother Schuyler fetched me two pieces. One was a silver vase, and the other a china one. I couldn't use them, I was sorry. Silver was commercial-looking. The painting on the china, a hodgepodge of a joss house. Then I was seized with a thought. I ran down to the kitchen. I borrowed an old scrubbing bucket such a soft antique hue i exclaimed with delight i elected one imperial rose and one little one for a retainer i fixed them in the bucket i thought it was verily the simplicity of the illustrious mr rickyu i presented the rest of the roses to mrs schuyler jr she stared at the bucket without a word i knew that her silence was the most forcible irony she didn't approve of setting such a bucket on the table american gins don't know any art i said when she left my uncle begged me not to act so fantastically twenty eighth here's a chamisen morning glory mother schuyler cried from the hall i darted out of my room well i exclaimed chamisen it is a three-stringed guitar of japan mr schuyler jr had sent it from yokohama as she explained she wished me to tinkle a little gambling music in the parlor before dinner it is a hard implement to handle it has no notation attainment is through unending blind practice i was compelled to learn by mother many a year ago but i soon gave it up for an english spelling book but i dare say i can play i regulated the key to begin with ting ting chang chang ting 
"'Want to hum, uncle?' I asked, facing aside. "'Love ditty is desirable,' Oji-san considered. "'Don't fancy me a geisha,' I said in defending laughter. Then I murmured an old hauta, haori kakuste, which was Englished by someone. She hid his coat, she plucked his sleeve. Today you cannot go, today at least you will not leave the heart that loves you so. The mado she undid, and back of the shoji slid, and clinging cried, Dear Lord, perceive the whole world is snow. Twenty ninth. We went to a theater last evening. Dear classical flower path, how I missed it in the American stage. Flower path? It is a projection into the auditorium used to represent when one starts out of the house or returns. So the American stage has no front gate scene. Everyone enters very likely from the kitchen door. The stage never turns round like the Japanese stage. Oh dear, Iyadawa. American play has too much kissing. Each time I was electrified. The pit was filled with a well-behaved throng. All the ladies took off their hats. Do they pay more respect than in church? The gentlemen never whiffed smoke. Japan theater is a hurly-burly. The boys roar up. Honorable tea, Okawa Yoroshi. Honorable cake. The attendants of tea houses bow around to the beneficent habitues like inclining puppets. Women sob. They laugh, stuffing their sleeves into their mouths. They are ready to put themselves in the play. They are sentimental. American women place themselves above the play. I doubted whether they were criticizing or enjoying. Some lady even used a spyglass to examine the face of a player. I thought it decidedly an impertinence. What a pry! I will not act to such an assembly if I ever happen to be an actress. What was the title of the play? I could hardly understand half of it. I tried hard to swallow my gape. Thirtieth. Mr. Oscar Ellis came to put the finishing touch to my picture. The execution was subtle sureness. He said that he would offer it to his beloved auntie, Mother Schuyler, of course, begging to let it ornament the wall of my room. My room? It is my room for a few days yet. I thought it exceedingly sweet. The wall is duskily red. The effect would be superb. When I announced to him that our leave would take place on the approaching fourth, he started as if he had received a stroke. So soon! he said. Yes, I said, turning my uneasy face. We are only beginning to understand each other. I am a bird of passage, as you know. I have to fly on my road. The air grew tragic. Then Oscar said, What will you do when you tire of flying? Saw. Well? I'll return to Los Angeles and induce you to marry me with my honorable oriental oratory. Will that do? We interchanged our nimble look. We laughed afterward. After he left Schuyler's, I said to myself that I would not mind positively if he would kiss me. The kiss must be on my brow, however. Lips are too personal. I wrote a note beseeching him not to forget to kiss me at my farewell. Then I chewed the note. I reviled my folly. 31st. Street walking is a delight. I'll mirror my face in the glass of the shop windows ambling by. I dropped a handkerchief today. A gentle gentleman, man behind me should be young and good-looking always, picked it up. His respectful, pardon me, made me feel as if I were living in the silver-armored age of chivalry. Shall I drop something again? I observed a variety of form in raising the skirt. One lifted a bit of the left by her fingertips. Another pulled up the right edge of her front. Another clinched out the center of her back, showing a significant fist. A corpulent one stepped, holding up both sides of her front. The miserable underskirt revealed itself in red. Which mode is becoming to me? 
january first nineteen hundred is today the opening of another century happy new year i will send a lot of shinen omidetto to tokyo isn't this a queer new year no shimenawa along the facades with flitting gohei no gate pine tree no sambo for an oblation unto the gods in any room no rice bread no golden toso for the cup i mingled with the neighbors girls for a rope jumping we played hide and seek i offered ten cents reward to the one who detected me <laughs> i abandoned the unprofitable job after emptying out all my change miss olive called on a bicycle i persuaded her to let me try on her bloomers she exchanged them for my walking skirt which was four inches shorter we hurried to the garden she helped me on the wheel such a bad american girl she slipped her hand from it i fell on a bush the touchy rose thorned in my hand second i made a discovery mother schuyler's teeth are all false i have no chance to explore whether her hair is a wig she chains a big bunch of keys to her waist its rattle sounds housewifely she forgot it laying it on the sitting-room table i knotted it to my waist strap i jiggled it jarin 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 third the sayonara dinner was given mrs ellis's folks joined us mother schuyler repeated every ten minutes her query when would i visit them again mr oscar set his depressive look on me i wasn't brave enough to encounter it i slid away from confronting him i found an elegant young man he impressed me as an image of apollo only god knows when i will reprint my footsteps on the soil of los angeles i felt awfully sorry in leaving such an agreeable company fold your tent like the arabs and silently steal away how sad fourth good-bye mr parrot san francisco fifth i am again at mrs willis's san francisco such miraculous san francisco water i will taste bliss again in drinking the midnight water stretching out my arm from the bed sixth I tied Dorothy's hair in Nippon style. She pleased me much by remembering the Japanese words I taught her. She is a cute dear. The mode had been the otabaka bon. I straightened her hair with my wet hand. I added a tiny bit of crimson crepe. She looked a lovely fairy. Seventh, rainy day. The heavily reserved weather confines me in the pose of genius my hair lounged down my shoulders disorder is the first step in being a genius i fancy my eyes should be rolled up to the sky in divine tragicalness i have had a greediness for the name of novelist to-day i found myself in the crisis where i must scribble or die i regret to say that mine is a love story also as every beginner's book has been i hope everybody will be contented with the destiny a respectable title for my fiction who says it is the style of name employed one hundred years ago the book will be concluded with three hundred pages now i wonder whether a long story is in demand chapter one is as follows when the moon rose this story begins when the moon rose its silvery rays it was six p m of april fell on the sheba park in laughter my heroine jogged along into the park singing a light song miss honourable moon how old are you thirteen and seven you say you are young enough to marry let me explain about her a bit her name is ohana san thirteen years old thirteen it is the age when the flower of girlhood starts to bloom bewitching hana do you remember a well by the glorious cherry-tree in the park the rikisha men moistened their parched lips at the heaven scent that is its name sir miss hana looked down into the well she began to adjust her hair 
the first worry of a girl after thirteen would naturally be about her hair she gazed up to the cherry blossoms and exclaimed utsukuchi na lovely then she found her face again in the well mirror thinking what a charming ohana-san it would make with the flowers on her hair my worthy readers i suppose it is time some one must enter he came he was a little boy i will not mention his name just yet he came close to her and pinched her little back both blushed facing each other they were quite strangers the evening zephyrs stirred the cherry blossoms they planted themselves silently among the falling petals as ethereal as snow i delight to stand in the storm of petals don't you hannah inclined her head a trifle in speaking the woman always speaks first let me see your school book again she said why he put it in her tiny hand thanks arigato she bowed low when she put the book on her shoulder she was running away singing miss honorable moon how old are you the boy stood aghast the author of this story found ohana san again by the same well on the next evening the boy's book in her hand of course she paced around the well muttering he must come because the moon rose but he was not seen my next chapter will be the second meeting end of section nine